Um, my presentation has nothing whatsoever to do with TB, so you know I'm not sure at this uh, juncture that's a good thing or a bad thing. Um, uh, I do actually work for a local authority. My, my day job is working for Tower Hamlets local authority, where I work in the special educational needs service. So I'm kind of used to uh, liaising with health professionals and talking about vulnerable groups in particular um, as they relate to, to children, um, children with special educational needs. Um, and uh, in the last two or three years, um, as a hobby, I've developed an interest in photography and street photography. <laughs> Um, and I started uh, a documentary project on a particular area in Hackney, so kind of locals will know Gillett Square, where the vortex is, uh, very well. So I'm going to do a brief talk about what I've been doing um, and then show you a multimedia piece. I, I hesitate to call it a film, but it is um, something uh, with images, sound and music, uh, which, lasts, uh, which lasts about four minutes. Okay, so... Uh, this is what I've kind of started doing in terms of photography, um, and this is uh, in Hackney, near Dolston Junction. It's basically me trying to capture something interesting or, or unusual um, as it kind of happens in the local environment. That's how I got into uh, photography, but um, I very rapidly wanted to do something which had a bit more kind of specific content. Um, ah, okay, right, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, and I started with Gillett Square because it's uh, somewhere where I know, because I go to the Vortex Jazz Club, which is there. Sometimes I play in the Vortex Jazz Club, play the trumpet, play music there. Um, and I just started to talk to the group of people that um, uh, hung out there to get to know them. Um, and I'd always walked past them um, as a group of street drinkers um, and probably given them quite a wide berth. But as I got to know them and got to talk to them, you realize, for one thing, that they're a very heterogeneous group. They've arrived at that place from all sorts of different paths, all sorts of different lives. And the other thing that really struck me was how much they supported each other. So one of the people that I interviewed said, uh, you know, Gillett Square was their one-stop shop. It was their social center. It was their social support network. And that particular place wasn't just um, a convenient place to drink. They actually had links going back there for 20 or more years. So they had very strong links uh, with each other, going back a very long way, but also to that particular spot. So, you know, particular places have particular significance for them. So they would talk about when it was a car park, um, and they used to hang out there and cook chicken and have fires. Um, so they have very kind of strong links with each other, and it's very particular to that uh, to that particular place. Um, so you can see some of them there. Um, that's Eric, the guy with the beard in the foreground. He's uh, been on the streets for a very long time, um, uh, but you know he's at one point had a job, had family, um, but has chosen really to kind of stay outside the system, uh, you know, in many ways. But I think he's just come into accommodation very. You know, very recently. Um, one of the ways I started with the group is to uh, take their picture. Um, so I'd, I'd take snaps of them if they wanted to pose for pictures once they got to know me, um, and I'd print out those pictures and give them to them. And they were very appreciative of that because uh, for many of them, they don't have pictures of themselves. Um, here's uh, Bianca. Bianca suffered terribly from uh, domestic violence, um, but she, you know, she really likes to have her picture taken, so I'll print out a picture, and the next time I'm in the square, um, I'll give her those prints. And uh, Bianca with uh, um, her uncle Max. Um, Max and Jackie, um, I'm not sure whether you'd call them um, a couple. I'm not quite sure exactly what their relationship is, but I know they have a relationship which goes back many, many years. Um, although he has another woman. Uh, but uh, one of the uh, things that uh, was very, very touching was that they said in all the time they'd been together, they'd never had a photograph of each other together. 
Um, so that was, you know, was you know, very interesting, um, very touching. So they really like to have, you know, photographs uh, <laughs> of each other. Um, the hand that you can see on the left, I always kind of think about this because um, uh, he, um, I think he's still in hospital in, in a coma because he got knocked off his bike. And it just exemplifies that for some of them who are on the streets a lot, they're, they're, as you know, their lives are very precarious, they're very vulnerable. Um, so I think he'd been drinking, he got knocked off his bike, uh, ended up in hospital. And since I've been doing the project, about four or five people have, uh, have died. Um, the guy uh, with the cap and the dark glasses, just uh, on the second on the left there, John, that's him with some of his family. Um, he died recently uh, of cancer, um, which I didn't know, but I took pictures of, uh, um, of his family. Uh, another character who comes to the square, I could talk at length about him. Piracy, boats, all sorts of people. But anyway, I won't do that. Um, the guy on the right died recently as well, um, Brian, who's been living for a long time, uh, off and on, on the streets. So again, I think, you know, his kind of lifestyle and uh, alcohol abuse um, all kind of contributed, I think, to his, uh, you know, to his heart attack. Bianca, you can see in the middle. Um, you'll hear the voice of uh, Bianca, the woman in the middle. You'll hear her talking and hear her singing. Um, Barry on the left, um, you'll hear him talking. Um, he's a, a great source of information about the square and about the history of the square and the links and support um, that, uh, you know, that go back a very long way. There's, um, at the moment, an oral histories project going on about Gillett Square, which is very interesting. So they've been interviewing people who um, hang around the square, people who live around the square, who use the square. They've been interviewing them, gathering their oral stories. Um, and I think later on this year, they're going to make those available in the square uh, with headphones somehow. So again, it's a, it's a very interesting area and quite a unique little kind of pocket of East London. Um, these are some of the guys that you'll see um, also in, in the piece. Uh, Sharky on the right, kind of lives just off the square, um, who's uh, on methadone at, at the moment. Um, Ali, um, in, Ali in the foreground, um, who was a real pain in the ass actually, um, but also deeply vulnerable as well, often getting kicked out of uh, hostels for abusing the people in the hostels and um, taking prostitutes in and then saying, oh, me, no, no, I'm sorry, you find me a flat, and, you know, um, all of this kind of thing. So he is quite a pain, but is also very vulnerable in his own way. He's from, uh, from Turkey. And Ahmed in the background, uh, I went into Ahmed's flat, and you'll see pictures from in Ahmed's flat uh, with uh, a group around him who are new arrivals to the square. So he's from Turkey, but he knows people from, uh, from Lithuania, from Russia. They're kind of, they're all staying in his flat. Uh, deeply, deeply alcoholic, uh, very troubled um, individual. Um, that's Graham. You'll see Graham uh, at the end of the piece. Graham uh, sadly committed suicide. Um, uh, a bit of a genius, Graham, a bit kind of anarchic character. He's uh, an artist, a poet, a, a sculptor, um, but also. Um, I think deeply schizophrenic and uh, a victim of um, kind of benefit changes as well. He was um, assessed as being fit for work and if anyone has uh, met Graham for five minutes will know that this man is in no way fit for work. Um, and he was also uh, threatened with uh, you know, being evicted from his flat and moving into a smaller accommodation. I think it was all too much for him so he hung himself. Um, and that is at uh, a memorial service. Eric knowed, uh, knew Graham extremely well. Okay. Um, you won't see this gentleman in there, but uh, he's quite interesting. I see him there quite often. Um, he tells me that he trained as a pharmacist. Um, he's also a lay preacher, but no one will let him work as a pharmacist. Um, I'm not sure, again, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. <laughs> Uh, but, you know, an example of one of the kind of characters that you come across in the square. 
Okay, so hopefully um, I'll be able to link to the presentation. Let's see in just a moment if I can turn the volume up. It's legal. It's the most legal thing, but yeah, it's the most deadliest. Your legal drink is killing everybody. And this is where I know people. If I need a beer or a sugar or someone to talk to, I have to come here. I come to the people that I know. But you have to come into the ghetto to sit with your ghetto friends. People that will sit and have a beer. And some of them are, 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 are homeless as well. Some of them, they, they're lost. They are, uh, they're bloody lot. When they're down, you just go, you just, just come out your house. Just go around them. Someone's going to make you laugh. Or someone's going to cheer you up. To be a better person, to get my son back, and be a mum I'm supposed to be, and prove everyone wrong. Not even everyone wrong, myself wrong. You can't, be, you can't be miserable and, 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 and sad all the time in the days of your life. Every, every, every um, give and take, man. Every give and take. 